So today we're going to be learning about work. Work is when a force moves a distance and the distance must be parallel to the force that is applied that gets the object in motion. The force in question must be the one that's causing the object to have a change in position. So if you look at these pictures here, this force that is applied right here is parallel to the distance being traveled. Okay, um, in the second picture, we can see that the force is actually pulled at an angle. So the only force that is contributing to the work done on the object is this component right here, the horizontal component. So we can see it's important to um, break our force into its X and Y components depending on the direction, the distance it is. So we refer to work as either being positive, negative, or zero. If the force is in the same direction as the movement of the object, for example, pushing a book across a table, then this would be considered positive work. So you can see the force and the distance, same direction, positive. If the force and the, di the direction that the object is moving are in opposite directions of each other, then this is considered negative work. For example, if you lower a heavy weight to the floor, in order to hold the weight up, you're applying a force upward, and the distance being traveled, you are moving it downward, so those are opposite to each other. For zero work, the force is at a 90 degree angle to the movement of the object. So for example, if you pulled a dog's leash up as you are actually walking the dog forward, then you're doing zero work. So let's think of a real world example. Would I do positive, negative, or zero work if I lifted a 200 pound weight from the floor to waist level? Well, in order to lift the weight, I'm applying a force upward and the distance it's moving is also upward. So since they're in the same direction, we would be doing positive work in this case. If we moved a weight from one side of the gym to the other side of the gym, we'd be applying a force upward to lift it and we'd be moving left or right. So those would be perpendicular to each other. So we would be doing zero work in this case. And if we just held a weight above uh, your head for 30 minutes, doesn't matter the amount of time you held it there, since you're not moving a distance at all, once again, zero work. Okay, so when a force moves a distance, we know that work is done. So if this is a simple scenario like shown, our equation would just be work is equal to force times distance. But in this case, when we're pulling at an angle, we only care about this force that is parallel to the distance or the displacement um, that the object moves. So our equation would actually be force times distance times cosine theta, or F cosine theta times D would also work. So for some unit analysis, let's look at our equation here. For force, we know that our units are newtons, and distance, our units are meters. So either way, our work is a newton meter. We rename this as a new unit called a joule. So a joule is a newton meter. So this is our second new unit that we have, uh, have in physics. The first one was a newton. So for a couple of examples, well, let's start off with a 1300 newton crate resting on a floor. We want to know how much work is required to move it at a constant speed. So we have the frictional force that opposes the motion of the box. So friction would be pointed this way. And if we are moving a distance of 4 meters opposite the direction of friction. So our frictional force, we have work equals force times distance. So we have 230 newtons times a distance of 4 meters we should get a value of 920 joules. And since they are opposite of each other, it is simply negative. For our second example, let's say we have the same crate, but this time we are applying a 500 Newton force at an angle of 10 degrees below the horizontal. 
So let's say here is our crate and we are applying a force of 500 newtons, 10 degrees below the horizontal. So here's the horizontal, 10 degrees. And we are moving it a distance of four meters still. So the whole 500 newtons is not put into work. The only force that is um, going to have an effect on work is this parallel force, this parallel force in this direction. So really we want this component, the x component. So our work is equal to force times distance. So our force is actually not 500, it's 500 times cosine of the angle of 10 degrees times the distance of 4 meters. And when we plug this in, we should get something around 1,969 joules. And it is positive work since the force in question, this x component, is parallel to the distance traveled. Okay, for our third example of work, we are going to lift the same 1300 newton crate vertically off of the floor. So if the box or crate itself weighs 1300 newtons, to overcome the force due to gravity and lift at a constant speed, we know that this is a situation that's in translational equilibrium meaning the upward force that's applied has to be equal to the downward force. So this upward force is going to be equal to the weight, which is 1300 newtons. And since we are lifting a distance of four meters in the same direction, when we calculate for work, work equals force times distance, we get 1300 newtons times a distance of four meters which is 5,200 joules. And it is positive since it's in the same direction. Okay, so for the fourth example, we are going to find the net work done on a 70 kilogram skydiver as she falls 30 meters. Okay, so first we're going to find the work of each force separately, the 250 Newton force and the 700 newton force, and then we're going to find the net force. So net is the sum of all forces. All right, so for part A, we need to find the work done by each of the forces. So we have two different work calculations. Um, let's just start with our original equation, work equals FD cos theta. Even though there is um, not a clear angle here, but since she is falling, whoa, that should be straight down, 30 meters down. If we look at this first force of 700 newtons, um, there is no angle between these two vectors. They are in the same direction. So our angle for theta is zero and cos of zero we know is just one. So if we plug this in, we get our force of 700 newtons times distance of 30 meters, times cosine of zero, which is just one, so I'm gonna leave that out. We end up getting 21,000 joules. And if we solve for the second work of the other force, we have Fd cos theta. But since these two vectors, the 250 Newton vector and the displacement vector are opposite directions, there's actually a 180 degree angle between them. So if we take 250 newtons times a distance of 30 meters, and we consider that cos of 180, which ends up just giving us a negative, which is exactly what we want since 250 and 30 are opposite directions, it's a negative. I wanted to just make sure that you are aware that this FD cos theta is the same thing as force times distance if they're um, opposite directions of each other. We end up getting negative 
7,500 joules. Okay, well, if we were to find uh, the total work, if we added the total work together, we have 21,000 minus 7,500. We get total work of 13,500 joules. So if we actually solve the problem a little bit differently and we find the network, so the sum of all the works, we have an overall force. Well, if we have 700 newton force down and we have 250 newton force up, we have a force of, let's say, 700 minus 200, that's 500, so 450 down, so negative 450 newtons times a distance of 30 meters should give us that same value of 13,500 joules. And since the displacement is 30 and 700 are both in the same direction, it's a positive work. So really this negative was only the sum of the force, only represented the sum of the forces. So really I guess that should have been a positive value here because um, the overall force is down and the displacement is down, same direction.